Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel. In this one we're going to look at some new functionality in AKS that allows you to create Azure private links and those links can then be used for example to wire them up to Azure front door. Let's take a look what we're going to try and do here. We're going to have an AKS cluster with a regular deployment and a service. And of course, a service makes our application available to the outside world. Now, we could already in the past tell AKS to create an internal load balancer for us. That would result in a load balancer created in the node resource group of your AKS cluster. That is not new. That would give you an IP address, a private IP address to reach the service in Kubernetes. Now, what you can do as new functionality is to tell or ask AKS to also create a private link service for you. You do that via annotations on this service object here. Now, the private link service, if you know a little bit about how that works, allows you from any network in your subscriptions even from subscriptions in other Azure AD tenants to connect privately to the service. So in this case, to our internal load balancer. This also means that you can ask customers to connect to your service from their subscriptions in another AD tenant. And then they can connect securely over the Microsoft backbone to your service. So you don't need to expose a public IP on the internet and have your customers connect to that public IP. Now you or your customers, in order to consume this private link service, they have to create private endpoints. Private endpoints are created in subnets, in virtual networks, and those private endpoints can then be linked to that private link service. Now we are not going to create a private endpoint ourselves. We are going to use a service in Azure that takes advantage of the private endpoint functionality to connect to private link services that you created. And in this case, it kind of makes sense to say, well, we have a service on our AKS cluster. We'd like to expose this over the internet with something like Front Door Premium. Now in Front Door Premium, you create endpoints and routes and the endpoint routes to an origin group. And that's a group of origins, basically where your applications live. So in our case, yeah, the, the origin group that needs to be configured that we can use private endpoints. And that's something that Frondor Premium, not the standard version, but Frondor Premium supports. So in the configuration of an origin inside an origin group, you can configure it in such a way that Frondor creates private endpoints. And by the way, those private endpoints you won't see in your subscriptions. These are managed fully by Frondor Premium. And then Frondor Premium is going to link up this private endpoint to the private link service that you created. That means that from the edge locations where Front Door Premium is living and where your customers, your consumers basically connect to your service, that Front Door Premium can connect securely over the Microsoft network to the internal load balancer that hosts your uh, service. If you don't use private endpoints, Front Door Premium would require a public IP for that. So you would basically expose your service via an external load balancer, or you would use something like an ingress controller. So in this case, and that's extremely important, we don't need a public IP address at the AKS level. Everything is internal and front door premium takes advantage of the private endpoint and private link service functionality. Now let's see how this works in practice. The first step is to deploy your application and create a Kubernetes service using an internal load balancer and private link service. Now, we first have a deployment of a sample application, Super API. Nothing special about that. Next, we will deploy this into a namespace called Super API. And within that namespace, we'll also have our service object. This is a regular Kubernetes service. There's nothing special about this. The type of that service is load balancer. Now, what we want is that our cluster creates not a public load balancer, which is the default behavior, but a private load balancer, an internal load balancer. So we use the service annotation here uh, that says create a internal one. 
Now the new functionality is what you see over here. This instructs the Azure Cloud Provider in Kubernetes to also create a private link service. So we specify PLS create is true. The name of our private link service will be my PLS. And a private link service also requires a network interface in a subnet which is used for netting purposes. So we also provide the PLS configuration with the name of the subnet that we'd like to create that interface in. Now, my cluster is of the type KubeNet and a KubeNet cluster, the nodes are deployed to a subnet called AKS subnet. And I'm just reusing that subnet that my nodes are in. You don't have to do that. You can also create or use a separate subnet here. You can create more than one IP address or network interface in that subnet. That is something that you would do to solve port exhaustion uh, issues. We don't have that issue here in the demo, so we only create one IP address. And I also specify the IP address to use in the subnet. Now, when I submit these manifests to my Kubernetes cluster, well, then a lot of stuff should happen. And one of these things is the creation of that private link service. Now I'm using a cube cuddle apply here with the uh, minus K option for customize because I have a customization not YAML here. And I'm going to apply all of this to my cluster. What happens now is that if we go to, uh, in this case, a K9S, what you'll see in K9S is that there will be a namespace, which is Super API, right? And within Super API, we see that there is a deployment here or a pod, which is coming from a deployment. And if I go to the services in Super API, I indeed see now that I have a service of type load balancer. It has an internal cluster IP as always, and the external IP is pending. It's important to note here that at this point in time, the Azure Cloud Provider in AKS is providing or is creating this internal load balancer and is also creating the private link services. If you have issues with this or it takes a long time for this to come up, uh, don't forget to do a describe here or that's D inside K9S and then you will be able to see what went wrong. In our case, nothing went wrong because the load balancer was ensured, which basically means that we created the load balancer at the Azure level. Inside the node resource group of our cluster, and that is the MC underscore group you see here, there is now a Kubernetes internal load balancer. This internal load balancer was created by the annotations on the service object. Like any load balancer, it has a front-end IP configuration that you can see over here. And there is a back-end pool configured, which basically connects that front-end IP to the pods that run our service. Now, of importance in this uh, demo is, of course, the private link service object. That's the one you see over there. It's called MyPLS, as indicated by the annotations. And there's also this network interface, which is used for netting the connections to this private link service. And there's only one interface as specified. Now, if I go to the private link service, we see, of course, all the details of that private link service. It is important to note that a private link service has an alias, and we'll use that later when we configure our front door origin. We see information about the NAT subnet, the NAT IP, and also the load balancer that is actually using uh, to provide the service functionality. Now, there's an alternative interface that we can use, which is, in this case, the private link interface, and that is the private link center. There you'll also see your private link services. And what's important to note here is that this private link service does not have a connection yet. There is nothing that takes advantage or is connected to this service. So what we're going to do is wire up front door, a front door endpoint that provides then the connectivity to our service via this private link service resource. I already started the creation of a front door profile. I gave my front door a name and I selected the premium SKU because that one supports 
private link and private endpoints. The endpoint itself, I'm going to give the name AKS, and then a endpoint host name is automatically generated by Frondor. Of course, we can use custom DNS names, but we're not going to do that here. Now, the origin type in this case, that should refer to our private link service. The type should be custom, and as the origin host name, you paste in the private link service alias. From that point in time, the enable private link service option becomes available. And now, of course, I have to select what private link service do I want to use. So I open up the list here of resources. I find my private link service. The region is in this case, West Europe. I'm going to have a request message here. I'm going to say, please approve this because I will have to approve this private link connectivity in the private link center because the private endpoint that Microsoft is using, front door is using that, is not in my own organization. So I have to approve this external connection, so to speak. Now, I'm not going to enable caching or enabling a WAF policy. I'm just gonna go to review and create here. And since it passes the validation, I'm going to click the create option. The front door profile is now going to be created. I can now go back to Private Link Center and in the pending connections, I see there is indeed a connection pending. The description is, please approve this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this pending connection and approve it. Clicking yes here is enough to start the approval. From this point in time, when we approve of this, the yeah, connection can be created from the private endpoint that's managed by Azure Front Door to our private link service. So after a while, when I go to my private link services here, what I will see is that indeed the connection is pending. What you see here now is that there is one connection using this private link service. It still says one pending, but after a while that will go away and it will just be one connection. Now I'm back in front door manager. And what you can see here is indeed, this is my uh, endpoint that I created. And I already uh, entered this curl command to go to this endpoint using HTTPS. Now my sample application is basically configured to respond with hello from super API. So if we're going here and I'm pressing enter, I'm indeed getting that response back. So this means that front door is connecting to my application on AKS using that private link service. Now there were a couple of things that I had to change here. In the route, I updated the route and I also set here the forwarding protocol to HTTP only. By default, it's set to match the incoming request, but my service does not um, support HTTPS. So that one should be uh, HTTP only in this case. Another thing I had to do on my front door was to go to my origin group. In the origin group, I also specified the health check that is done on my service. And that should not be a head, which was the default. In my case, get should be used here. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't work. But with, do, with those two uh, minor modifications, I can clearly see that indeed my uh, front door to private link service configuration is working. And if you're using here uh, an endpoint called slash source, I can also see some additional information. And it's clear that I'm coming from front door. I see my uh, front door ID uh, over here, and I also see some additional information that was added by Frondor. For example, X forwarded host and things like that. So it's perfectly clear here that the connection is made to our internal AKS service via an internal load balancer, via private link service, and Frondor is connecting to that private link service. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you like this and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.